Okay, this video is about uh, my interview with Ruth Heidrich, PhD. We talked about um, optimizing diet for uh, exercise performance and for cancer prevention. I actually had the video on Zoom, but I can't get my Zoom uh, recording download thing to work, so I can't I can't show you the video of our actual interview. I wish I could. Uh, it was very nice. It was uh, very pleasant. Uh, so anyways, I'm just going to summarize my interview with her that was done earlier today. Um, I asked her what she eats for a pre-workout meal. And she said that she doesn't eat a pre-workout meal because all of her marathons and triathlons were early in the morning. So there was no reason to eat on the same day of the race. Um, she did eat during the marathons and triathlons when she would go to the relief stations, you know, that are periodically spaced throughout the race. And when she was there, she would just eat... Um, <clears throat> at these uh, help stations, fruits and drink water, that's it. The day before the competition, she would just eat her usual diet, a lot of starches, uh, fruits and vegetables, you know, 100% vegan diet. Um, then the next question I asked her was, how did she eat, and by the way, she felt that her energy was great. Um, and she ate, you know, she ate a lot of food the day before. She's carbohydrate loading, but she did that every day. Okay, what did she eat um, in terms of cancer prevention and treatment? When she was first diagnosed with um, breast cancer, it was a big primary tumor. She went to Dr. McDougall. He recommended, you know, 100% vegan diet. She did have surgery. She had a modified radical mastectomy, but she declined chemotherapy. She declined uh, radiation therapy. She just went 100% vegan and was exercising quite a bit. She ate the McDougall diet, which means predominantly starches. Most of her calories from starches, the vast majority. I would predict in the ballpark of about 85%. Uh, McDougall recommends on his diet relatively little fruit, you know, like let's say about two servings a day or something like that. No oil. She feels the most important thing for a person to eat for minimizing the risk of cancer progression um, is meat, dairy, and oil. You know, meat and dairy, especially from the recommendations of T. Colin Campbell, avoiding the oil as well, especially from the recommendations of Dr. McDougall. You know, they're all, all three of these things are carcinogenic. Currently, she eats a lot of sweet potatoes. She, she had become, so she started out with the McDougal diet for a very long time. Then she went to becoming a raw vegan for a while. Uh, now she's back to eating a lot of starches, especially her sweet potatoes. She also still eats a lot of fruits and veggies. So basically those three things. I mean, those are the three good foods. Starches, where most calories should come from for most people. Fruits also can satisfy energy needs, but not as effectively are they at satisfying hunger. Um, and then um, eating the, uh, the vegetables, okay, especially greens. She routinely have three uh, salads or more every day. So that was one thing that was interesting too, is she had been hit by a car when she was in her 50s, mid 50s, and she had a comminuted fracture, and she was back in a competition within about seven and a half months so that's an extraordinarily rapid recovery. It's very difficult to heal a comminuted fracture. Comminution and a fracture just means broken into multiple parts. So a simple fracture, there's two separate parts. But a comminuted fracture, there's three or more parts. So those are much more difficult to heal effectively. And she's already in her 50s, for example. Um, and her eating three or more salads a day is any of the greens, kale or any of the greens. What they reminded me was about Dr. Esselstyn's recommendations to eat multiple servings. He recommends as many as like six servings of greens every day. The gist of it being is that when you first eat the greens that contain nitrates, the back of your tongue has bacteria that convert them to nitrites. And I think it's like NO3 is a nitrate, NO2 is a nitrite, and then in your stomach gets converted to NO, NO, um, nitric oxide, and that goes into your blood and you get the systemic vasodilation effect. Um, so that's interesting because a lot of people are trying to heal all kinds of things. They're trying to heal an infection, trying to heal a wound, trying to heal a surgery. So that's good to know. Um, what does she consider to be the three pillars of health? She says diet, exercise, and sleep. I would also add, you know, she has a very strong sense of purpose. She's very energetic, vivacious. She was enthusiastic to get back to competing in her marathons and triathlons. And I believe this kind of reminds me of the Maxwell Maltz. He's a plastic surgeon who wrote about which patients have good outcomes for surgery. And the patients who are very eager to get back and do something, whatever it might be, back to their job, back to their children, back to their competitions, they just get better faster. They just do better. Um, 
And when you eat the he optimal healthy diet, um, you get the best possible results. You exercise a lot. does all kinds of good things for your fitness. It also keeps her smart. I don't know her exact age. I'm going to predict it's about 88 years old, and she's very mentally fast. You know, I'm used to talking to people in their 50s and 60s that are cognitively slow, where she's got normal fast mentation for a person. And it has been her experience that runners in general tend to age very well. Their cognitive function tends to be retained very well. Um, you know, I asked her, and I heard her back say, we didn't talk so much about this today, but I'd heard her in previous lectures, you know, say when people ask her, what's the most common reason people are sick? She says, because they're ignorant, especially they're ignorant about diet, especially, you know, the vegan diet. Um, and that's the good thing about ignorance is it's easy to cure. Just open a book or just start watching some YouTube videos about the vegan diet and it becomes pretty obvious, you know. Um, that it's the way to go. The best nutrition experts in the world, they're all low-fat, low-sodium uh, vegans. Okay, you can say, well, what about the ones who are not? Well, I'm saying then they're not the best experts, okay? <laughs> you know, it's just the way it is. You're, you're not going to get ahead in life by plugging up your arteries with high-fat diets. Okay, um, she did have at the time of her original diagnosis of breast cancer a modified radical mastectomy on one side. Uh, subsequent to that, she had to wait about a year after that, but then she got bilateral breast implants. Um, initially silicone, then I think she also had saline for a while. And she, not until many years later, about 27 years later, she developed breast implant illness. She underwent explant of that, means removal of it, only with a partial capsulectomy. It has the forms of capsule around it. And the explant helped improve her symptoms, but her symptoms have not improved as much as she would like. She still has some fatigue. They used to think that silicone is inert, but the body always forms uh, some immune response to any type of foreign body implanted within it. And silicone, uh, in some patients, will over time lead to autoimmune-like symptoms. So she's had some problems with that. She's making some progress, but that was a little bit frustrating for her. And this didn't come on until much later, like I said, 27 years after the original implants. So anyways, it was a very enjoyable, helpful interview. And what are some of the biggest things you can get out of it? You know, she's lived the life. She's still very mentally sharp, and here she is in her late 80s. I had a, I thought she was very inspiring. I read a couple of her books. I have a picture of her in my bathroom. I have all these persons who inspire me. Um, their pictures on the wall in my bathroom and she's one of them. Um, so, you know, kind of reconfirms the low fat, low sodium vegan diet. And she did well with either when it was starch based or when it was raw and largely fruit based. Both of those methods of doing it work quite well from her. It seems to be the unique thing about her diet uh, was the extra salads. That presumably is the reason why she had extraordinarily rapid healing of fractures. Because she was hit by cars two times when she was riding her bike. Uh, and so she actually doesn't ride the bike anymore in the street because it's too dangerous. Um, so I think diet, diet, exercise, sleep, and a sense of purpose, we've talked about that before, um, all dramatically increase a person's health and vitality and ability to resist uh, cancer. Um, breast implant illness, I gave a separate lecture on that. So anyways, it's very helpful. She's also done previous... Uh, video interviews. Her, her website is ruthheidrich.com if you want to go to her website or ask her any questions or anything. So uh, anyways, hope that's helpful.